Finally, one more thought. All things come to those who wait. You may remember the slogan from Heinz ketchup commercials or a Guinness Stout campaign, but it goes back at least as far as the 19th century in an English poem by Lady Mary Montgomery Curry. This week it proved to still be true as some good things came to some people who'd been waiting for a long time, like the Florida Panthers who won their first Stanley Cup since joining the NHL 30 years ago. And to Julian Assange, who spent over five years in a British prison after being holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for seven years, all to avoid U.S. prosecution for his role in publishing some 750,000 classified documents. This week, Mr. Assange pled guilty to a single count of conspiracy, was sentenced to time served, and finally returned to his native Australia. Julian should never have spent a single day in prison. But today we celebrate because today, Julian is free. This is a huge win for Australia and for Australian democracy. This is a huge win for free speech. To be sure, there are some who continue to wait for things to come their way, like the crypto community waiting for SEC approval of a second spot ETF, this one for Ether. Though SEC Chair Gensler says they have the key to their own jail and can end it whenever they want. It's really about the asset managers making the full disclosure so that those registration statements can go effective and those lawyers know what that is. It's smoothly functioning. It's really up to the asset managers to make the proper disclosures. Currency traders keep waiting for Japan to raise its interest rates and give some life to the yen after 25 years of zero or negative interest rates. But in the meantime, saw the yen fall to its lowest level against the dollar in nearly 40 years. It's now just a question of managing the downward descent of the yen rather than changing policy. They're not going to be able with intervention alone to stem this. For the big U.S. banks, it looks right now like waiting is the best way for things to come their way. As federal bank regulators got so much criticism of their proposal to increase reserve requirements that they've gone back to the drawing board to start from scratch. If I were a betting person, I'd take the latter or reproposal because I think the changes will be so significant, but it's probably not much more than a coin flip. The banks and all the rest of us continue to wait for the Federal Reserve to back off those high rates it took up by 500 basis points in record time. What matters is that first rate cut is indeed a light switch because what that signals is the Fed believes that it has won the war on inflation and so it's all downhill from there in terms of rates. But this week we were told once again that we'd have to be patient. With significant progress on inflation and the labor market cooling gradually, at some point, it will be appropriate to reduce the level of policy restriction to maintain a healthy balance in the economy. The timing of any such adjustment will depend on how economic data evolve and what they imply for the economic outlook and balance of risks. Then there's what may be the biggest wait of them all, at least for New York City, where we've been waiting for over 100 years for the promised extension of the Second Avenue subway line. After tearing down the elevated rail lines in the 40s and 50s in anticipation of imminent subway service, construction finally got underway in 1972 and then was suspended for over 30 years for lack of money. In 2017, phase one of the Second Avenue subway finally opened. First conceived of in the 20s, now 85 years later, construction is blasting forward. So far, officials have yet to raise the money or even budget the remaining phases that will extend and complete the line. Over a century of waiting was supposed to be drawing to a close this year as revenues from congestion pricing were going to fund finally finishing the Second Avenue subway. But then, as it had so many times before, the funding disappeared, at least for now. It's $15 billion directly to the MTA, and that will spur at least another $5 billion in terms of federal funds. That's a $20 billion infusion to the transit system. It also would have resulted in more than $15 billion in bonds that were going to be issued. So it's a real blow financially to the region. We can only hope that Lady Curry was right, that it will come if we wait long enough.